Hey guys, today we look at a vintage 1966 Silvertone 1484. What's happening everybody so um i was out searching the interweb this week and came across a vintage silvertone 1484 circa 1966 actually they were made by dan electro for sears back in the day and uh it's non-functional but uh i think what's wrong with it should be relatively simple to fix so I thought we'd do a quick little video on uh, getting it, fixing it, and most importantly, having fun trying it out. So here you go, 1966 Silvertone 1484, uh, pulled out of the cabinet. As you can see, it's a two channel amplifier, channel one, channel two. Each channel has a volume, bass, and treble control. And there's an inbuilt reverb, which is uh, famously horrible. And uh, I'll show you that in a second, the little reverb tank. Uh, and the tremolo uh, with speed and intensity there. Um, the trem on these is really tasty. Um, but yeah, like I said, the reverb is nothing to shake a stick at. So, you know. Uh, the fact that that's missing a knob is cosmetically disturbing, but it's a feature I likely will not be using anyways in this amp. If I'm lucky, I can find a switch, uh, a, a knob, I should say, for this, but so far all I can find is guys selling full kits for a third of what I paid for this entire thing, and I just need one effing matching knob. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, you've got two inputs for channel one, an indicator light, two inputs for channel two, a foot switch, which will turn the uh, reverb and tremolo on and off, and uh, you got a power switch, standby switch, and a ground switch. And that's a look at the front panel. Let's turn it around. All right, here is the back side of the chassis. As you can see, it looks pretty damn clean. Well, I... Like I said earlier, I got ahead of myself before shooting the video. I should have shown you guys uh, 50 years of dust and debris, but it all just came right off for the most part. I didn't want to get too crazy in there on some of the hard to reach places as I did not want to disturb solder joints and old equipment. But you can see everything in here is original, original caps. Um, everything looks really good in here. Um, there's that one tube socket that's been replaced, but so far that's the only thing on this amp I can find that's been replaced. Uh, I pulled the tubes out for cleaning purposes. Um, one issue I knew from the uh, listing was that this fuse, uh, obviously the cap was busted off of it, so uh, I can't get it to power up at all. I have a new fuse uh, Holder ordered should be here in a couple days and also These came with these, you know, it's a 1966 So there's no grounding or anything. It's got the old two-prong plug um, So, uh, you know as much as I'd love to keep this thing a hundred percent stock. I already have to replace that uh, fuse holder and well, I decided to 
but we're gonna go ahead and upgrade this to a grounded cable because why not right I mean be dumb not to and uh, yeah so uh, let's take a look inside well you can see the inside components here everything looks original all the solder joints are original I mean there's no leaking from the caps everything looks really good man I think I got a I think I got a jewel in the rough here so yeah um, just beautiful I'm really hoping there's not some underlying problem I'm not seeing but before I do any real in-depth testing of anything I'm gonna fix the simple things and hopefully she'll just power up and I won't have to go any deeper all right so there you go you know go ahead and put this on pause for a couple days and I'll be back when my shipment of parts comes in stay tuned all right and a beautiful look here at the 1484 uh, I've got the back open right now um, in the process of putting in this uh, new um, fuse carrier and uh, while I was in here I decided to swap out the old uh, two-prong plug for a grounded one um, disconnecting this uh, spare outlet on the back uh, take that out of the equation yeah well, taking out uh, this right here is the ground switch uh, which I will no longer need now that uh, we're making it a uh, grounded cable and uh, yeah so basically what you do in this situation is you want to take uh, your new power cord right and you run that in and you want to bypass this ground switch so you're going to run the hot lead from the cable directly to the on off switch from the on off switch to the fuse and then to the fuse to the transformer which buries down underneath here and then the other wire you just take directly the alternate wire all the way to the transformer and so you just basically eliminate this and then you take your ground and you run it to chassis uh, preferably what I'm doing right now is got this little tab uh, which will mount down there somewhere if you can see it I don't know uh, but there's a screw for the base of the transformer which is an excellent place to go ahead and ground that so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll uh, catch up in a bit well, here you can see the knobs. I just got done scrubbing those nice and clean. Sadly, one has been replaced with uh, some rando. So I gotta try and track down one of these cool old school knobs. So here you'll see channel one. It's basically just like an old Marshall Plexi where you have two channels with no master volume. Right, so channel one, channel two, uh, as far as controls go, are identical. You have a volume, a bass, and a treble. They're really simple. Then the, the second channel also has an inbuilt reverb and a trem unit. <sighs> that sounded a lot better than this reverb does. Second channel is a bit more gain heavy than the first channel. So I figure I'll play a little bit of... Uh, clean tones and whatnot through this uh, channel one then we'll swap it up and I'll grab the Explorer and we'll check out some of the gain of channel two Yeah, isn't that smooth? Volume you turn up, 
the more gain you get. It's a real simple circuit. However, if you want the higher gains, obviously you're at higher volumes. Damn. Think like uh, ACDC-ish. Anyway, you can get there with the first channel. I think that's a pretty decent look at channel one. Let's zip over to channel two and take a look at that. Now we're oh, you know what we've got? <laughs> Drop D tuning. <laughs> crunchy. Crank it up about three quarters. A little bit more. Let's hear how much gain this thing has on tap. give you all the old school hard frickin' rock tone you want. You know, you get more if you want to throw some pedals in front of it, but uh, let's take a look. Let's see just how marvelous this shit-ass reverb is. Turn it halfway up. Everything it's got, maybe it can redeem itself. It sounds like you know what it sounds like. Sounds like somebody took a can, then they put shit in that can. So we'll just keep that shit can turned off. So the redeemer is the trim. We'll put the strength up to about, oh, uh, I don't know, half of my weight quarter's worth of speed.
go ridiculous. <laughs> It's kind of a lot. Let's take her back down. What do you say we try cranking some trem and some gain? Sounds like it could be fun. <laughs> Obviously. So, we'll get the hell out of here. Hey, thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. It really helps us a lot when you watch the whole damn thing. Not that you have to. I'm not guilty into anything. But, you know, you don't want to go to hell or anything, do you? And don't forget to, you know. That'd be great. Catch you guys later. 1484. Boom. See ya.